Yellowstone supervolcano and how it was discovered leaking something unusual. This is by USGS findings. We already know that the geysers spout out arsenic. The uh, over 60% of the world's geysers are found here in Yellowstone and they do spout out arsenic and they found arsenic in the rivers that flow towards the uh, Hebgen Lake, for example, where a lot, unfortunately, a lot of people, a lot of people go fishing there for trout. This is the map I want to uh, show you where the mantle plume goes from Baja, as you can see, going through Utah into Yellowstone. But please take a look at the uh, northeastern part of upstate New York, Maine, New England, uh, Ontario, and Quebec. That's man That's magma. That's mantle under there. But of course, here they do not have it all. The, uh, they didn't have at all the uh, uh, mantle, the magma that's underneath the uh, Great Lakes, which has to do with the mid-continental rift. That's also magma under there, too. Unfortunately, when we have the central U.S. quakes, they don't refer to this magma. They always say that uh, those quakes are very far away from the tectonic uh, edges. That's uh, not even shown here in this map, as you can see. But even in the central area around the Great Lakes, you have magma there. They don't know where it's coming from, but it is there. So, and we also have the fact that the residue that's left from the geysers, we found out it's something very beautiful here. For example, these geysers, the geysers, you can see that white residue. That's not snow. That's the minerals that come out from the water that uh, is so hot that it evaporates and brings out minerals from the earth from where it travels. And it spouts it out, as you can see here, it looks like snow, but it's not. And that, after a time, uh, after a long time, it turns into opal. And that, after it's squeezed, the water squeezed out, turns into quartz. Okay, so opals and quartz are found around. I didn't even know that opals and quartz come from geysers as well, but yeah. Uh, now, what else is found here? So, we know that uh, Yellowstone vol volcano scientists discovered that the supervolcano was releasing around 60 tons of helium from underground stores every year. 60 tons. And I have to tell you also every single day it's releasing 40,000 tons of carbon dioxide alone come from Yellowstone supervolcano. It's a lot of carbon dioxide every day and it was so much that that's what caused them to examine it and that's how they found the humongous, humongous, uh, huge uh, magma reservoir underneath the magma chamber of Yellowstone because of the tremendous amount of carbon dioxide. So, and now we have these uh, 60 tons of helium every year coming from underground. Now, and we know that the Yellowstone supervolcano gets its uh, label as a supervolcano due to the ability to inflict catastrophe on a worldwide scale in the event of a super eruption. It sits on the northwest part of Wyoming and straddles over to Montana and Idaho and the volcano is constantly monitored of course by US Geological Survey and it has Yellowstone Volcano Observatory there for any signs that uh, they have deformation or uh, too much quake activity or whatever may be going on and uh, researchers were stunned in 2014 when a study showed them that it was leaking hundreds possibly thousands more of this gas than expected. The scientist was Jacob Lowenstern of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory and he said we had sort of an aha moment where we realized wow there's a lot of crustal helium coming out of Yellowstone far more than we would have predicted. So when uranium and thorium decay they produce he said helium or in this case isotope helium-4. It's the gas gurgling up from the store that's trapped under the Earth's core for up to 2 million years. The helium was initially released when a hot spot of collected magma fought its way to the Earth's surface, causing a series of volcanic eruptions. And as we know, the most recent super eruption was 640,000 years ago. Dr. Evans said, think of it this way. You have these old crustal rocks just sitting around for hundreds of millions, perhaps billions of years. They have this boring little existence and then suddenly somebody puts a heat under them and they start giving up all their long-held secrets. And he goes to say, Lawrence says, 
This really is not a volcano story, but it reveals how the Earth's crust behaves on a long time frame. He explains that crust holds its breath for long periods of time and then releases it during tectoni tectonically and volcanically active bursts. And that's when, in 2004, scientists discovered something very unusual was happening inside Yellowstone National Park, that is, Yellowstone Supervolcano. Park rangers discovered five bisons had died suddenly over a night in a, near a geyser. Hank Hessler, who investigated this uh, event, said they were not in a typical death pose, kind of like a cat that's curled up. It looked like they had just fallen over. We think it was just a very cold night, a very still night. The geothermal gases accumulated, and then the bison just basically dropped where they were standing. So uh, when, when they were thinking about this, scientists came to the conclusion that the bison had been uh, done away with by the toxic mix of gas created by the magma below Yellowstone National Park, obviously. Now, Yellowstone supervolcano is one of the 20 supervolcanoes of the world, but I think there's a lot more than that if you count in Germany and uh, perhaps even uh, Italy or Santorini, the area around Greece. But we've also discovered one around the northeast, around upstate New York, Maine, Quebec, and Ontario. And I call that, I call that like the Yellowstone-like supervolcano of the East Coast. And most of us didn't even know it was there, but as I showed you in the map before, there's still magma under there. We also have a, uh, another, yellow, another uh, supervolcano on the uh, west coast, California, Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano. And we also have the Valles Caldera Volcano in New Mexico. We, always, we also have another supervolcano in the area just about where the Three Sisters volcanoes are on uh, the west coast north of California. So we have a lot of activity here. There's the magma again on the East Coast, as you can see. And as we said before, what's missing is the Great Lakes Mid-Continental Rift Mantle Plume. So there's a lot of magma there in uh, North America, as you can see. Now, Yellowstone, as we said, one of the 20 supervolcanoes. The uh, Major features of the caldera measure about 34 by 45 miles. That was formed through the last three super eruptions 2.1 million years ago. Huckleberry Ridge eruption 2.1 million years ago, which created the Island Park caldera and the Huckleberry Ridge tuff. The Mesa Falls eruption happened 1.3 million years ago, which created the Henry Forks caldera and the Mesa Falls tuff. And the Lava Creek eruption about 640, 630,000 years ago, which created the Yellowstone caldera and the Lava Creek Tuff, the caldera that we know now, where we see Yellowstone Lake as well. This was from uh, Wikipedia and uh, Callum Horror Express UK, and of course USGS. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.